Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to this liturgy of the Holy Eucharist with and for St. Benedict's Episcopal Church in Smyrna, Georgia. We are, as you may imagine, doing social distancing, so there are only a couple of us here in the nave. And I, alas, will be the only one to receive the communion, but in God's will, the desire to receive communion is all that is required to receive all the benefits thereof. I hope you're doing well. We are trying to expand our ways of connecting with you. And uh, so I hope you'll check out the, the e-blast as it comes week by week. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His, His mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Guided by the collect printed in your bulletin or on page 219 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray the collect for the fifth Sunday in Lent together. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked. And there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people." 
I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 130 in unison. It's in the Book of Common Prayer on page 784 and in your bulletin. Out of the depths I have called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for Him. In His word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With Him there is plenteous redemption, and He shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through His Spirit that dwells in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Glory to you, you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, He whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. 
Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Christ. In the name of God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. It is good to be here with you. I think of you often, wondering if you're experiencing our coronavirus social distancing as I am. Many of us, maybe all of us, are experiencing multiple changes, most which we had no power to determine. We profess every Sunday that Jesus experienced the same powerlessness. In the creed, we just said he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. But he's Jesus, wholly centered in God. And that surely allowed him to be calm, to be strong, and to express his undistracted love. Jesus' way is not so easy for us during this time. We are separated from friends and neighbors, families and co-workers, and this, our St. Benedict's Church family. We are unable to pursue the usual round of errands, meetings, worship, and social connections. We are, I am, disoriented. 
we find ourselves saddened, frustrated, even infuriated. We too pray the psalmist's prayer out of the depths, have I called to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. There is a bit of desperation in that and sometimes in our lives. But know this, Jesus is right there with us. Those experiences of sadness and frustration and anger are feelings Jesus expressed throughout his ministry. Take Luke 13, 34. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. It seems to be such sadness for Jesus and also for us. For we too desire at times like this to be mothered by another and by God. But will we still let Christ do this for us, we little chicks? Will we be open to his embrace even this day? Next, Matthew 26, 40. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? In the Garden of Gethsemane, the night before his crucifixion, Jesus desires his disciples to stay awake while he prays, but they do not. Surely, Jesus is frustrated yet again by his tribe's inability to do what he asks to follow him. And the disciples, I think, are probably deeply frustrated by their own physical and emotional exhaustion. We may be also. Of course, Jesus' love for the twelve was undiminished. And when we are experiencing physical and emotional exhaustion, Jesus is awake for us, prays with us, stands beside us. Today, it's not the 12, but us who are Jesus' tribe. Now, Mark, chapter 11, 15 to 19. Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Here is Jesus, outside the temple, the holiest place, the very house of God. He is among the currency exchange businesses where would-be worshipers would exchange their Roman coins required by the emperor for Jewish coins so that with Jewish coins they could without defilement, purchase an animal to take into the temple to sacrifice to God. Jesus is really, really infuriated. But what is the focus of his rage? Doing business at church? Selling animals to be killed for God? Probably both. But mostly... It is the whole notion that if we do everything right, follow every command of the holy law, 
God will forgive us, strengthen us, bless us, and give us the God seal of approval. Perhaps, and I suspect, Jesus is enraged that this transaction between God and us is required over and over and over again. That worshipers are taught that they are always on the very edge of screwing up before God. Sound familiar? In the past weeks, one pastor said, after naming his list of all the sinners in the world by category, he said, and I quote, Folks, the death angel may be moving right now across the planet. This is the time to get right with God. Fortunately, we have a resource to counter that argument. The earliest theologian in the Christian faith, St. Paul, who wrote in today's epistle, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Did you hear that? His spirit that dwells in you. At the end of this same chapter of Romans, chapter 8, in the very last verse of that chapter, Paul continues, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor coronavirus, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. So I say to myself what I now say to you, do not lose heart. God is with us at this very moment and in every moment of our living. Nothing and no one is beyond the reach of his embrace. I say to us, be patient, ask for help, take deep breaths, pray continually, scream into your pillow at night if need be, but don't let the last word of your day be sadness or frustration or anger. Let our days always end in joy and thanksgiving and in Christ's abounding love. Let us pray. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family and our church family, St. Benedict's. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Standing together, let us profess the ancient faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy catholic church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Remembering Tammy and Rick Buck, Chad Jacobs, Robin Austin, Laela Morrow, the Oliver family, Maggie Newman, Polly Branch, Laura Wessels, the McGargie family, Lee Bowen, Gillian Cooper, George Sechrist, Jessica Shantha, Joey Martin, Barbara Naylor, Judith King, Dorita Lima, Kevin Brainerd, Sarah Housley, Rob Hamblin, Martha Campbell, Michael Hale, Kirby Husbands, John Gillespie, Adam Webb, Edna Johnston, Victoria Witkowitz, Jason Chastain, Ray and Jonathan Betts, Marie Drake, Mac Yost, Timothy, Timothy Willis, and Thomas Carr. We pray for people in our community and around the world who are suffering from the ec economic consequences of the pandemic. And we pray for all public servants who are working to promote health and well-being in our common life. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let life perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And, and also with you. you. Please greet one another in the name of Christ. I ask you to join in singing the hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God, as the table is prepared for our holy meal. 
Walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Our liturgy continues now with Eucharistic Prayer C, which is in the bulletin and also begins on page 369 in the Book of Common Prayer. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their meaning. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and redemption as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our forebears, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Deborah, Esther, and Ruth, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, says the Lord. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, says the Lord. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood dwell in me, and I in them. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, says the Lord. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This Sunday, we again use a different post-communion prayer written in enriching our worship to an Episcopal um, collection of prayers. And it is particularly worded for those who desire to receive communion but are not able to. Looking at your bulletin, please join in this prayer. Let us pray. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though I cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, I thank you that I have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, 
and all other benefits of his passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may I embody your desire and be renewed for your service through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of God which passes all our understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. After several fruitless attempts to find hand sanitizer at a variety of stores, I looked in the trunk of my car and found four bottles. 